Chapter 12 The Same Power to be Revealed Today By the grace of Christ, the apostles were made what they were. It was sincere devotion and humble, earnest prayer that brought them into close communion with Him. They sat together with Him in heavenly places. They realized the greatness of their debt to Him. By earnest, persevering prayer, they obtained the endowment of the Holy Spirit, and then they went forth, weighted with the burden of saving souls, filled with zeal to extend the triumphs of the cross. And under their labors, many souls were brought from darkness to light, and many churches were raised up. Shall we be less earnest than were the apostles? Shall we not by living faith claim the promises that moved them to the depths of their being to call upon the Lord Jesus for the fulfillment of his word? John 16:24 says, Ask, and ye shall receive. Is not the Spirit of God to come today in answer to the earnest, persevering prayer and fill men with power? Is not God saying today to his praying, trusting, believing workers who are opening the scriptures to the ignorant of the precious truth they contain, Lo, I am with you always, even unto the end of the world? Matthew 28, 20. Why, then, is the church so weak and spiritless? As the disciples, filled with the power of the Spirit, went forth to proclaim the gospel, so God's servants are to go forth today, filled with an unselfish desire to give the message of mercy to those who are in the darkness of error and unbelief. We are to take up the Lord's work. He gives us our part to do in cooperation with Him, and He will also move on the hearts of unbelievers to carry forward His work in the regions beyond. Already many are receiving the Holy Spirit, and no longer will the way be blocked by listless indifference. Why has the history of the work of the disciples, as they labored with holy zeal, animated and vitalized by the Holy Spirit, been recorded, if it is not that from this record the Lord's people today are to gain an inspiration to work earnestly for Him? What the Lord did for His people in that time, it is just as essential and more so, that he do for his people today. All that the apostles did, every church member today is to do. And we are to work with as much fervor to be accompanied by the Holy Spirit in as much greater measure as the increase of wickedness demands a more decided call to repentance. Everyone on whom is shining the light of present truth is to be stirred with compassion for those who are in darkness. From all believers, light is to be reflected in clear, distinct rays, a work similar to that which the Lord did through his delegated messengers after the day of Pentecost, he is waiting to do today. At this time, when the end of all things is at hand, should not the zeal of the church exceed even that of the early church? Zeal for the glory of God moved the disciples to bear witness to the truth with mighty power, should not this zeal fire our hearts with a longing to tell the story of redeeming love of Christ and Him crucified? Should not the power of God be even more mightily revealed today than in the time of the apostles?'